Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is Doc Junel, and the subject at hand is community and public health. For today's video, I will be discussing two important topics. First, the introduction to CPH, and second is public health. If you're ready, then let's start. In order for us to have a good understanding of CPH, then first we have to define some important terms. If I ask you, how can you say that a person is healthy? A lot of people would probably say, a person is healthy if they are free from injury, from illness, or from pain. But the WHO gave a very good definition of health. It says that health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and it's not the mere absence of disease or infirmity. Meaning, even if a person is free from injury, illness, or pain, they may not necessarily be healthy. There should be a good balance between the person's physical, mental, and social well-being. Think of it this way. If a person is experiencing pain physically, then it will affect his mental state. And once his mental state is affected, then it will, it will also eventually affect his relationships with people. The other way around is also applicable. If a person is involved in a toxic relationship, then a person will become anxious, possibly depressed, and later on, because of that mental state that he is in, he might develop physical illnesses brought about by that um, impaired mental state. So basically, a person can only be considered healthy if there is a good balance of his physical, mental, and social well-being. Because our relationships also affect our mind and our body and vice versa. The second term which we have to understand is community. So probably a lot of us would understand community to be a group of people living in the same place. Although that is true, that can be considered a community, but the correct definition of a community is that they are a collective body of individuals identified by a common characteristic including geography but is not limited to it. They can be a group of people sharing a common interest, a common experience, a common concern or value. So let's say people who enjoy playing online games. Since they share the same interest, they can already be considered a community. Let's say people who go to um, Alcoholic Anonymous. These are people who share the same concern, who share the same experiences. So that's already considered a community. And we can also consider faith. People who have the same faith, like the Roman Catholic faith, the born-again Christians, this group of people can already be considered a community, not only because they share a, a the same living vicinities, not only because they share the same geographies, but because as long as they are identified by a common character, such as interest, experience, concern, or values, then they can be considered a community. So putting two and two together, we, we have the term community health. When we say community health, it talks about the health status. The health status of a defined group of people. All right. So when we say community health, we try to determine if a certain population is healthy. What are the problems in this community? And what can we do to promote, protect, and preserve their health? That is community health. The health status, the determination of the health status of a certain community, and the actions we can do to promote, protect, and preserve their health. One thing we should understand about community health is that it is limited to a defined group of people only. It is limited to a certain geography, to a certain interest, to a certain experience, value, or concern. But once we get a wider scope of population, it then becomes public health. So by definition, public health is the science and the art of preventing disease, prolonging life, and promoting human health. So it is the application of what we get from community health in application to a wider scope of population. And how do we do that? Public health is achieved through organized efforts and informed choices, not only of a certain population, 
but of different societies, organizations, public and private enterprise, communities, and even individuals. So the scope of public health is much wider than that of community health, no? And public health does not only try to determine the health status of the cert that certain group of people, but it tries to create a system, a machinery through organized effort and informed choices to really push for the prevention of disease, prolonging life, and promotion of human health. So basically, you think of it this way. Let's imagine that this is you. And the people surrounding you are the people whom you share a similar or a common characteristic with, whether it be geography, interest, experience, values, or concerns. That blue, that blue circle represents community health. You and the community that surrounds you. Once we include other communities, let's say geography-wise, we included people from Visayas, Mindanao, Luzon, and NCR, then this will be considered now public health. We have to make an organized effort to make sure that healthcare delivery is equitable to all places. And once we widen further the scope and include other nations, this then is considered global health. Okay? Now, why is this relevant to your course as medical technologists? I want to share with you here the top mortalities, the top causes of death in the years 2020 and 2021. The red bar represents the year 2020 and the blue bar represents year 2021. The top cause of death in the year 2021 is ischemic heart disease. What are ischemic heart diseases? This, are, this includes heart attack. So anything that causes a blockage in the vessels of the heart. All right, That's a number one cause of death last year. Secondly, it's followed by cerebrovascular diseases. These are blockages in the vessels found in the brain. Basically, a stroke. Third cause of death last year, neoplasms, cancers, all types of cancers. Number four, complications brought about by diabetes mellitus. And number five, look at this, COVID-19. Now, these laboratory tests... The laboratory tests that you perform as medical technologists help in the diagnosis of these diseases. And who perform these tests? Medical technologists like you. You are the ones who help doctors determine the disease entities and pathologies that patients suffer from and experience. So you have a vital role in the prevention, diagnosis, and management of these cases. Just imagine, what if the medical technologists will not be able to perform these lab tests well? Then, lesser diagnosis will be made of ischemic heart disease, of cerebrovascular disease, of neoplasms, diabetes, and even of COVID-19. And if the numbers would change, the public would probably think na, Oy, the Philippines is probably getting healthier because we have lowered cases of ischemic heart disease. Oh, we're probably not affected anymore by COVID-19 because the cases are now going down. So if the diagnosis will be misconstrued, the statistics will be inaccurate. And if the counts will go down, people will think that we have finally cured the disease and people will be misled. That's why you guys have to learn CPH in order to contribute better to the public health of the country. Some other CPH terminologies which are important include the World Health Organization. So WHO is actually a specialized agency under the United Nations and they are concerned with international public health. The second term that I want you to know is Department of Health or DOH. The DOH is the executive department of the Philippine government which ensures the, the public's access to basic public health services. Okay? Remember that? Executive Department of the Philippine Government responsible to ensure access to basic public health services. 
So in the next few topics, we will be discussing the history and the roles, functions of the WHO, and even that of the DOH. Second is demography. According to the definition, demography is a study of statistics, statistics such as birth, death, income, or the incidence of disease. In order to make it easier, I just want you to remember, demography is the study of statistics. It is the mathematical computation as to how many babies are born in a year, how many people died in a certain period of time, what is the average income of a certain population. So when we say demography, it is the calculation, the process of getting the numbers. It is the study of statistics to determine certain data. But when we apply demography to medicine, it becomes epidemiology. Epidemiology is the branch of medicine which deals with the incidence, the distribution, and the possible control of diseases and other factors relating to health. So whatever result we get from demography, once we apply that now to medicine, then it becomes epidemiology. Let's say we were able to determine by demography that there were only 10 live births in the community of Barangay Holy Spirit for the month of February. That's quite low. So when we apply that to medicine, we'll try to determine what is happening to the health of the reproductive population of Barangay Holy Spirit. Is there a problem, let's say, in terms of their reproductive health? So once we apply the results of demography to medicine, it becomes epidemiology. Hopefully that's clear. Next is mortality. When we say mortal, it means life, no? So mortality is the number of deaths in a given time or place. So when I ask you, can you give me the top 10 mortalities in a certain area in 2021? Then what I'm asking for are the top causes of death in that certain area. Mortality, cause of death or numbers of death. And when we say morbidity, Morbidity means disease. Morbid means disease. It is the number of diseases in a certain population. So when I say, what are the top 10 causes of morbidity in Barangay 1, 2, 3, Tondo, Manila? Then what I'm asking for are the top 10 causes of disease amongst the residents of Barangay 1, 2, 3. So again, when we say mortality, what is the number of death and morbidity? the number of diseases, okay? Next is epidemic. When we say epidemic, this is an unexpectedly large number of cases of an illness. It can also be a specific health-related behavior or a health-related event in a particular population. In simple terms, there was a sudden surge of cases of a certain disease in that population and, or in that specific area. Usually, epidemics are seasonal, no? And this includes diseases such as dengue and your leptospirosis during the rainy season. Some other important epidemics in the Philippines include, in year 2009, the Ahimi or AH1N1 swine flu epidemic. Also, in 2018, missiles. Again, rose in number without any, predispos any predisposing factors. Bigla na lang tumaas yung measles in 2018. And also in 2019, one of the diseases that has long been eradicated in the country made a comeback. No? A sudden spike in cases. And that is polio. Okay? So a sudden, an unexpectedly large number of cases of a specific illness, that is an epidemic. Next is endemic. When we say endemic, this is a disease that regularly occurs in a certain population. So this disease is already common in that area. So one example of this is malaria. And malaria is endemic in Palawan. That's why some doctors, when you go to Palawan, they would recommend that you take prophylaxis to protect you from a possible malaria infection once you get to Palawan. Another endemic disease is schistosomiasis 
or schistosoma parasite. You will encounter this when you go to your third year, to your parasitology. Schistosoma is endemic in the provinces of Mindoro. And this is because this parasite is common in the farmlands. Okay? So diseases that are commonly found or occur regularly in a certain place. Lastly, pandemic. A pandemic is an outbreak of disease, an unexpectedly large number of cases of a certain disease, but not only limit to, limited to a certain population, but it now covers a wide geographical area, such as a continent or even multiple continents. And that includes, of course, the most famous one right now, COVID-19. Last slide for the first topic, incidence. I want you to remember here the letter N, incidence, because this refers to the occurrence of new cases. So when we talk about incidence, this refers to new cases of a certain disease or a certain injury. So when I ask you, what is the incidence of COVID-19 for the month of February 2022? If I tell you to get the incidence of COVID for the month of February, then what I am looking for are the number of fresh cases, the number of new cases being counted daily for the entire month of February 2022. On the other hand, when we say prevalence, this is the total, okay? The proportion of persons in a population who have developed a particular disease whether it be old or new. So if incidence talks about new cases, prevalence talks about the total proportion, the total number of people who have developed a certain disease. So let's say, I want you to determine the prevalence of COVID-19 for the year 2021. So when I ask you for the prevalence, I want you to compute for the old cases of COVID-19 plus the new cases of COVID-19 for the entire year of 2021. Okay, incidence, new, prevalence, total, old and new. Alright, that's it. So, stay tuned for the second part of our discussion. Uh, visit the other videos. Bye!